Take three standard production boats. The Junot Sun Odyssey 379, the Varianta 37, and this boat, the Bavaria Cruiser 37. Which would you pick? We set off for two days in the Solent to find out. Well, apart from a lack of sunshine, it's been a pretty cracking day, actually. We started off in very light conditions, but the breeze picked up and we ended up beating all down the western Solent in about 16, 17 knots of breeze, sometimes up to about 18, 19. And it was a great test for the boats. It was really nice. had a great beat on this boat. As you know, we had a self-tacking jib, so we enjoyed the beat a lot more than some of the others, perhaps. But um, no, that was a cracking sail down there. We're just having a spot of lunch now and then it's going to be all changed for this afternoon and we're all on different boats. to Yarmouth Harbour for our overnight cruise and uh, we've had a lovely day, cracking conditions, 20 knots, sun, really good upwind work and um, we're going to berth here for the night and we'll see what tomorrow brings. It's going to be a bit torrential but uh, we've had good conditions so far, let's hope it keeps up. So this morning I was sailing this boat, the Juno Sun Odyssey 379. She's actually one of Juno's most popular models but this one is a boat with a difference. The owner of this boat has ticked some very interesting options on, on the list, including self-tacking jib, code zero, and some other details in the cockpit that make it quite an interesting boat. But it also makes it quite an expensive boat. And that got me thinking, because in the afternoon, this was the boat that I sailed. The Varianta 37. Now let's be honest, on the face of it, she's a straightforward, almost plain looking boat but once you get her sailing she's anything but plain she was a cracking boat to sail and she's also the cheapest boat of the three that we've got here which makes you wonder whether you really need all that extra stuff okay the theme continues down below on the variant 37 um, you get a very basic boat and you add to add to it as you please example in the galley open simple basic um, but it works, the whole interior works, you've got plenty of space in the saloon uh, and in the cabins. One thing I have found is it's uninsulated, so things do rattle around and make quite a lot of noise. Doors and cupboards do that, but otherwise, um, yeah, simple and it works well. This 379 is typical of, of Genoa's new Sun Odyssey range which all of the boats are really well proportioned. You get good sizes in, in the cabins, in the saloon area. This one's a two cabin version. It's got a big lazarette area um, and you'd hardly notice there's a lift keel. So it's a really versatile package. I'll be honest, she's not my favorite boat under sail. The other boats were actually quicker and actually felt a little bit better, more balanced on the helm. But that's not the end of the story for the Bavaria 37, because come down below, and she's a very, very nice layout indeed. Very straightforward, but a large galley, a very comfortable saloon area, decent cabins aft, and very nicely built. And perhaps it's little surprise that the Bavaria Cruiser 37 has actually been one of their most popular models. Just come back into the Hamble. We had a really good sort of mock weekend cruise to Yarmouth and back. Um, 
And what has stood out to all of us is that although the boats on paper look very similar, uh, there is enough of a price bracket between them and quite a lot of subtleties that shun out through the testing. And we were all really impressed with the sailing ability of the Varianta, the comfort of the Bavaria, and the versatility and the, the all-round nature of the, the Geno stood out for both the sailing and for comfort. But to look at the, the price subtleties and the differences between these boats, read more in the September issue of Yachting World. <laughs>